Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, we're going to talk about what the stiffest rackets in tennis are today. Stay tuned. All right, so coffee sponsor of today is... Looks like Ari from Lisbon. Greetings from Lisbon, Portugal. I'm a beginner and play three to five times a week. I'm completely into tennis right now. I follow your channel and love your videos. Thanks for all the knowledge you share. I, ha I just had a question. I have a Clash 100 Ultralight version 2 that I love. But I got a gift card for my company to spend on sports gear. I don't, I don't need it, but thought I'd want to get a new racket to try um, other models too. Which racket would you recommend? I'm 5'4 and 130 pound girl with a tendency for wrist injury. I played with my friend's head speed MP once and enjoyed it. Thanks. Well, Ari, that is an interesting question. Um, with wrist injuries, I would definitely stay on the slightly lighter side, like a 10.6, like 300 grams or less. Um, you have an ultralight clash, which is like nine ounces, a uh, little over nine ounces, but it's head heavy, which is going to help you a bit. I would probably stick with a Clash if I were you and get the new um, Clash 100 version 2 um, in the regular weight, just a regular Clash 100. That's just what I recommend. I, I can see that helping you a little bit more. The extra weight will help you a little bit more. It'll be rebalanced so that you can get the racket across a little faster. Okay, so Clash 100 version 2 is what I recommend. All right, if you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you all in advance. All right, so we're talking about stiffness today in rackets, and this question actually came from Tim Bruner. Tim writes, love the YouTube channel. Keep the content coming. Could you do a video on top five or 10 stiffest rackets? Well, sure, Tim, I'll do that for you right now. All right, hold on a sec. Okay, so what I have here is a bunch of stiff rackets. What constitute a stiff racket though? Well, if you're the ordinary person who haven't played tennis in a while and walks into a tennis shop, you're gonna come over here, pick up this Roger racket and say, that's so stiff, that's so stiff. Yeah, sure, compared to a wooden racket. So here's the thing, guys. Every racket on this wall is stiff because it ain't, you know, it, right? Can you flex this? No, you can't. But some are stiffer than others. In today's tennis world, this is actually one of the more flexible rackets. So let me just get that out there and clear, all right? So you don't make a fool out of yourself when you walk into a tennis shop saying, this is stiff, this is stiff. How do you know this is stiff? It doesn't flex when you do this, okay? So don't do that. We're just shaking our heads when you do that, okay? So the softest racket out today is actually the Clash. It's because of the material that they make, make it with, and it does I mean, you can't even flex it, it's stiff. Until you strike a ball with it, you don't know that it flexes. 
it has a 54 RA rating. So there is a rating system that rates racket stiffness. The machine actually holds it by the handle like this. You put um, a thing here and it just pushes down on it. And then it, a number pops up that tells you how stiff the racket is. This at 54 is currently the lowest of all rackets. So the most flexible racket is the Clash in today's world. All right, so let's talk about stiff rackets now, okay? The other end of the spectrum. All right, let's get back over here. Now, the characteristic of a stiff racket is that it's thick. You can see the thickness of each of these rackets. But why? Why is this Dunlop 8.0 so stiff. Why is it so thick? Well, the thickness makes the racket more rigid, so it gives less. I mean, if you think about a piece of wood, imagine if you have a two by four, okay? And it's pretty rigid. Imagine if you have a one by four, so instead of having two inches wide, you have one inch wide. That's going to be more flexible versus two inches. It's kind of the same concept here. The thicker this is, the more rigid the hoop, the more rigid the racket will be. Now, I've picked out the stiffest rackets that uh, are on the market today, and I'm going to show you. Um, what they are. So the head TIS 6, right, has a 75 rating, 29 on the constant beam. So that's millimeters, okay? That's millimeters constantly through. So the thickness of it's 29 all the way through the racket. The 8.0 that I was just handling has a 76. That's kind of a tapered beam. So at the top, it's 26. In the middle of the hoop, it's 27. And then back towards the yoke, which is towards the, uh, the bridge, is 26. So tapering it. Knowing that the middle part of these numbers is where flex will normally happen is why they actually increase the center part of that racket. So... The other thing that we're noticing is with all of these rackets, they're going to be 110 square inches or bigger, normally bigger. Okay, so that's 120 square inches, 110. This one's 115. This one's 110. This one's 115. So triad three is 113. And we'll, we'll get into that one in a minute here. So when... Back in my day, when we were, when I was growing up, like you would have like a Wilson profile or a hammer that would be a thick beam racket, but in a smaller head. You had the option of getting a 95 or in the case of a Yamaha Secret 4, a um, 100, okay? But in today's world of tennis, the rackets tend to be lighter, bigger, and thicker. So you don't really have an option of getting like a 95 anymore in a stiffer racket or even a 100 because none of the rating scales will be over 70, right, 70. 70 is my magic number in stiffness. Anything under that is probably not going to be as stiff. I know there's hundreds out there that's like 68, 67, maybe even a 69, but you will not see a 100 square inch racket, unless you look really hard, like really hard, will be over 70. All right, so... Let's look at this racket right here that rates at 76. 
on the 8.0. Maybe I'm wrong. This actually says 77 here on this particular one. So maybe it's changed a bit um, in this older model. But you can see, like look at the thickness right here. Because this part's not going to bend too much. And then look at here. And then look at here. Okay, although it's only 110, this 26 at the top, pretty rigid. The 27 goes a little thicker in the center, and then 26 back. So these two numbers are going to firm up the racket, and that's going to stiffen up that center. So there's not going to be a whole lot of give in that racket. And that's 7677, according to the placard. I found 76, but um, might have changed a bit. So that's actually the stiffest racket on the market today. Um, although that TIS-6 is big, thick, 29 all around is super thick. And a constant beam, which means it's really, really rigid. Um, but let's take a look at some other numbers here. Like, if you can see, they tried, this is at the top. The first numbers are at the top. So they try to keep it a little more under control so that you can have a faster head, which is what this causes, like a little more racket head speed. This number at the end here is towards the throat and the yoke. And that's what's going to cause a little bit of more flexing because the flex point of the racket is probably going to be at that point of the throat contacts the racket. I'll show you that. So the thickest part's going to be here, right? Right there. As it tapers down into here, this part is where a lot of the flexing is going to happen into here. If you thicken this part up here, you firm up a lot of the racket too. If you thin this part here, you cause a little more flex and a little more comfort and a little more, you know, flexing, a little more softness of the racket. So comfort happens here. Power happens right about there. Okay. Now, the anomaly of all of these is this triad three. Now, let's take a look at the numbers of a triad three. So 26 at the top, 30, which is the biggest number in the center of that racket, and then 26 back at the throat uh, yoke area. Now, but it doesn't, it doesn't read a number, right? But why doesn't it read a number? Because it's connected here with these pads, the machine can't read an accurate number. When, when the machine presses here, it gives here and then causes a, a, a small number to come up, which comes up to like 20 something or 30. So it, it doesn't give an accurate uh, reading for this particular racket. But it is stiff and it is comfortable. It's just the number can't be read. My guess is it's probably a comfortable 70 if, if this thing wasn't really involved. But because it's involved, and this is 30 here, right? It, it, it's, not, it's not quite reading. But this is a stiff, comfortable racket, let's say. So what did we learn today? Stiff rackets are going to be oversized. They're going to be on the lighter side, probably less than 10 ounces for sure. All right, so powerful rackets, yes, they are. Big rackets, yes, they are. Should you be playing with a racket like that? Well, do you need the power? Do you want a light racket? Do you play a lot of doubles? Do you enjoy hitting it as hard as you can and it going as fast as the speed of light, 
Well, if you say yes to all that, then try a big racket. They're always fun to hit with anyways. Okay, so power, if power is what you want, try these big bad rackets. All right, Tim, thanks for the question. Those are your five probably stiffest rackets on the market today. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. All right, guys, are you looking for a coach, a pro? I know it's been super difficult looking for somebody out there to teach you. I'm in the game myself, and it's super difficult to find somebody to, you know, teach you, somebody to hit with. Um, we know that the number one reason why people give up the game is because they can't find anybody to play with. And now you can't find anybody to teach you. Well, this is where play your court is going to give you a hand. All right. Check out play your court. They have professionals. They have hitting partners. They even help you set up a game. The resources are there for you to keep you in the game of tennis. Go to playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin and get your own personal discount from me. Link is below. Stay in the game, guys.